Hey, what's up, everybody? Doing a live market recap for Monday, February the 8th. Hope everybody had a good start to the week. Today was a pretty interesting day. Some names absolutely flying. Bitcoin exploding. Elon Musk coming out and dropping the bomb. Hey, actually, I actually talked about it in my weekend video. The, what's the next thing? That Elon's going to say he put BTC on the balance sheet. And here we go. Off to the races. And that's exactly what happened. Let's let's just get a little bit organized over here. So I got a whole bunch of tickers got to get through. I'm going to quickly touch on the market here. Very interesting. Congratulations to Crypto Bulls. Man, Alon's moving the dog and now he's moving BTC. I bet the Crypto Bulls love that. So congratulations, guys. Listen, market, let's get into it really quickly because we got a whole bunch of tickers. I am going to take some, not all, the requests from the YouTube live stream. I'm not going to take them all because otherwise this video will probably be two hours long and we have a lot of tickers to get through. So potentially I'm already going to cover most of the tickers that a lot of people are going to want to cover during the live stream off of YouTube. Also check out the video we just dropped with Skylight, some DD fundamentals on the company, which looks like it's got some pretty good prospects. So watch out for that name. SHG on the TSX, SHG FF on the US exchange market. Listen, this is right from a bearish perspective. I mean, there is none, right? Yeah. We're just looking for where is there going to be an eventual pivot in the market, and then we'll see what the consolidation looks like. Obviously, we've been running last week, bullish and golfing candlestick on the weekly, uh, as bullish as you could get, right? Trading all time. All time highs, bullish and golfing candlestick, which you anticipate. You anticipate you're going to trade higher. Today we closed at all time high. Fantastic reminder. We're thinking 4K. We're looking towards 4K. And after 4K, we're going to determine, you know, what's the consolidation going to look like. If, if even we're going to pause there, but potentially there could be a pause here. So this is a zone I'm watching right now. So this is, you know, the top short term top that we had in April 2019. It's not a notable level in the market at all. It was just a little bit of a correction. Selling may and go away, right? That was the idea, but it didn't work. And then when we topped out at the top of the coronavirus crash, and so we got a couple touches in here. So I'm watching this zone to see if this zone's gonna be a factor. Reminder, the all-time high trend line coming off the bottom of the financial crisis crash is down over here, right? It's down over here. Now we topped, we dropped, topped, dropped, and then a top again, again, and now it's our support, right? We're looking at it to be our support. So that's the real notable top trend line in terms of a resistance level. This one in here, we're looking to see, is it gonna have any reaction? We're there right now. So we're gonna be watching to see what the reaction is in here. We know the bottom of the Corona crash is our new major support trend line. So we're gonna be watching this. You know, essentially we're gonna be watching this forever. As long as this is gonna hold as a support and if it's lost, then it's, we're gonna look at it to see if it holds as a resistance. Overall right now, that 4K target I'm talking about potentially is going to be 405.9. We're going to be watching what's going to happen in that 4K range. But right now, I'm going to watch this trend line in here and see if it has any factor on the market. I'm going to quickly touch on BTC. And for BTC, massive move here. I'm going to switch this off to a log chart. So this is what I'm watching in here, looking at this pitchfork from the bottom. And once we started to get that reversal in here in Feb of 19 to our top of June of 19, to our bottom here of March of 20, right? Corona crash. And looking at this pitchfork in here, this is where we pivoted from and we came back down weekly bull flag, right? So if we look at this from a weekly bull flag perspective and we run a fib extension on this move, here's our target, 68,586 and then 87, 87,022. The 87,022 would bring us up to the upper parallel on this pitchfork. It's just something I'm gonna be watching. It lines up with a FIB extension. I would run the FIB extension on this move regardless if we're gonna use the pitchfork or not. The pitchfork is seeing some relation to it. We're gonna see if it's gonna be a little bit more valid as time goes on. But overall, those are the two targets I would be looking at getting off of the log chart right now. If we look at this from a weekly chart perspective and just wanna hide this for now. We're looking at this weekly chart, bull break, very nice, the weekly ADMA caught up. Everything came in here, it back tested that zone, back test and run. Everything's looking great right now. So BTC bulls, the only thing right now is, of course, because of Elon, you're too far extended. We're gonna look for daily consolidation eventually. It doesn't mean it's gonna pause here. We could absolutely continue to run up and get very far extended. But you see here, we were cruising, holding the ADMA the, the entire way, right? See, oh, 
just did that wrong. Here we go, holding it, right? Continuously came back a little bit, reversal candlestick. Too far extended, that's when the correction started. You could see what's happening now. We were riding up it, riding up. Now it's too far extended. So I start to get a little bit concerned of some consolidation about to hit the chart. Let's move on and talk about the top tickers that are requested in the community. So we're gonna go through those. First one is Zoom. So Zoom had a consolidation day today. Here's the notable thing we're gonna be looking at. A couple of things. One, no volume, right? No volume. We would have loved to have gone through this zone, but if we notice, if we note, we knew this is likely going to be the pause zone right in here. That was the 0.382. This is off of our top. Let me clean this up. This 0.382 in here is off of our top to our bottom. Okay, top to our bottom. So we know this entire trade is based off of Fibonacci's and the way it's been working off of Fibonacci's perfectly. How much are we off of the bottom? Let's just do a quick you know, snapshot of this. Off of the bottom, we are, well, technically on today's close, 28, 29% off of the bottom, unknown news. We're simply just trading off of technicals in here, Fibonacci's. So now, a couple things. We pivoted off the 0.382. We had no sell volume. For me right now, here's the zone. I do not want to lose. Now I took off half of those 400s for Feb 19 because the consolidation I can see was starting. I wanna make sure I'm getting protective on the gains, but didn't sell the 560s. But looking at this zone in here, if we look at this retracement now, this potential retracement from our breakout, this is our breakout in here. And we think about a uh, retracement move Right in here, this is our breakout, We're breaking this resistance at 404, and our 0.382 lines up at 405, and that's technically where we went from today, acting as a little bit of support on very low bearish consolidation volume. So that's great, that's exactly what I wanted to see, no complaints. Don't wanna lose this zone. I don't wanna fall back down to the GP. GP is like, that's not good right now. This is momentum, this is a breakout. We should look for a strong push. There's not a lot of resistance in this zone. We should be able to go through the zone. It's not a lot of volume in here. This is a lot of consolidation. We've gone up here, we've built our base to get up in the zone. If we fall back down to the GP, it's not as, trade's not over, of course. It could take a long time to still play out, but not as desirable from a short-term perspective. We'll have to be very patient with it. That's gonna be the case. So the ideal zone right now is that 405, 404. We hold the back test, which essentially happened today. So tomorrow, we want to see a bull day. We want to see the continuation day. And again, if we start off a little bit bearish, watch out for the bull volume or the bear volume. If it's very small, look for that dip to get bought. Everything's going to catch up. ADMA, everything here is not, you know, it was a little bit extended. It's not going to be extended anymore. And now we start thinking about 435, 456, and we should be able to move through this zone pretty quickly. If we get up over our resistance in here, which is going to be that 427 zone, we should be able to move pretty quickly right up into this range. So that's what, what I'm watching on Zoom. Zoom's still looking very good, no complaints. Cheers, everybody. Checking out Square. So Square, Falling Wedge, Breakout. Uh, this looks like, here we go, right, 300. Think about 300 on this trade. Ultimately, I believe we're just gonna run straight up into earnings. If we look at this move, consolidation, we're gonna run a fib off of here to our top, to the retracement right in there. Okay, let me just add the trend line so people could see. We're gonna be looking at 290, 316. That's where I think we're going. Of course, today, very big bull day, big bull volume. Everything's looking great right now. I anticipate this chart's gonna just melt up in blue skies. No concerns, you love the volume. It tells us higher prices to come. Those are the prices I'd be looking for on Square. SE, the one that just keeps on going. Every dip getting bought on this name. I've never played it, like, silly me, right? You should be playing this name. Bot previous all-time high, back tested, ran here. So the only thing now is just a little bit extended, no divergence here, everything's lining up good. Let me just double check weekly. There is some divergence on the weekly, but you know, that's, that's had weekly divergences this entire way and it's continued to melt up. So, I mean, using weekly divergence as a short-term swing trader is nothing too notable and it takes perfection to absolutely nail it. From a bullish perspective, you're in blue skies. Got a little bit of an upper wick today. I imagine this is just going to continue to run in blue skies right now. There's no major sell signal. This little bit of bear volume in here just came to a back test. We could potentially just look for a new back test, right? That's it, right in here. And we technically already did. So this is what I'd be watching, just a continuation move. Bull volume's good, anticipate, you know, continuation play. Blue sky name, you wanna be in. If you're in these positions, they don't really give you too much reason to get out. Palantir, so today, gapped up, ran, 
then pulled back. They had a little bit of news in the pre-market. This is what we talked about on the weekend video. We would anticipate we're going to pop up. When we pop up, we're going to look for the lower high near the GP. What happened today? If you didn't watch the weekend video, make sure you make sure you watch it. This helps you prepare for what's the most likely scenario. And this is the most likely scenario I talked about on the weekend video that we would set up a triangle. And this triangle is developing right now. GP bounce, GP rejection. We didn't. We got there by a couple of pennies, right? We just missed it by a couple of pennies. But that's the scenario I'm going to be looking for and anticipate we trade in a consolidation range in a triangle. Now, the thing is they have earnings on February 16th, but they also have a share unlock on February 19th. So generally I would look for the run up to the earnings. So we're still going to look for that pattern. And then on the 16th, where you're going to anticipate after that, no matter what is going to sell into the unlock. And then after the unlock that we would ramp, right? We would ramp do a share unlock bounce which I assume then we're going to be trading up higher. So as of right now, GP to GP volume, you know, there's a reversal candlestick on the daily. I'm going to anticipate we're going to trade tight in this range. If we do get volume and a breakout over that GP, we look for a new all-time high. We look for a ramp up into earnings and then sell as we go into the share unlock on February 19th. So let's be prepared for that. Ultimately, if we didn't have earnings, and I was just looking at the chart, GP to GP triangle, that's likely what's going to be the scenario in here. We're going to trade pretty tightly. Let's watch out for the volume if it's going to change our tune. So Neo took Neo calls today, 75 calls. No idea. I can't remember which date I took them for. They were far. I don't know if they were March or April. I can't remember. Actually, let's just double check that because I'm talking about it. So let's look Neo. Let me see here. Neo, Neo. Bear with me. April 16th, 75 strikes. So I was looking at this thinking, you know what? It's getting ready. It's getting ready for the ramp. I like this consolidation, very lengthy consolidation, basing period, move up into that 79 zone. We've come down into the zone. You know, let's let's just pick this up here, right? Previous all-time high, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 touches of the zone. So we know, like, it should be weakening, but... You know, the bear volume is pretty weak. I'm thinking it's accumulation, not a weakening zone. So I'm looking up on this move and this is a great zone for a low risk entry. So I decided to take 75 calls out to money. So I took a low risk trade and decided to make a high risk trade by going up to money. But that's where you're going to get some return if this is really going to work out. So 54.35, if we were to lose that zone and we start to see some bear volume pick up, that would be the end of that trade. Ultimately, I like what we're seeing. Looking for a breakout on this trade. Let's clean this up in here. And right now we want to get up over that 59, 55 double top. If we break that double top, we start thinking about that upper trend line here on the daily chart, right? Upper trend line. Well, I don't got it showing on the daily chart right in here, right in there. That's what we start watching. Brings us up into the 62 zone. That would lead me to believe, hey, we're, we saw accumulation of the zone. We're breaking out of the zone right now. That's what we saw today. And now we want to see the continuation tomorrow. Like we don't want to waste time here. Like, it's time to go, right? Because we've been in this zone. We see the dip buy, we see the lower wick, lower wick, lower wick, lower wick, what was say? Lower wick, bullish reversal hammer candlestick. That was the reason for getting in off of that zone. Here we go. We should be looking for the breakout now on Neo. Let's go move on. Talk about the Baidu. So Baidu is significantly like running, right? Continuously running. We had that weekly resistance in here that we still gotta watch. We're gonna come up into it the next two days, or potentially we're just gonna gap up over it, right? This entire zone. And we're running through it, right? We had a little bit of a pause in here. We traded in this range for about six to seven days. Let me just double check that. Yeah, even more. We traded in for two weeks and we're still seeing continuation move. We know there's a lot of events happening in, in the Chinese market right now. Um, I check out the post that Sheriff's posted about the liquidity injection and everything that's taking place there. So we are looking for a breakout here, all time high. Eventually, we will come back into the zone. That's generally what we're going to look for, right? We're going to look for the breakout in here. We're running vertical on the chart, right? We're essentially just running vertical. There's a little bit of a pause in the zone. And then eventually we'll look for that back test of this range eventually. But it looks like there's a good opportunity for continuous momentum trade right now taking place in Baidu. Let's move on and talk about Mara. Well, I don't really want to talk about Mara because, you know, it's essentially what's BTC doing, right? This is looking re really good. Uh, no red flags. It broke out of the triangle today. Massive volume. Everything's looking great right now. If you're in this trade, if you're in anything that's related to correlating to uh, BTC, like go look at uh, 
MSTR, right? Like everything, like fantastic. Look at the volume. Everything looks like continuation. Ultimately, we're just going to be looking for when BTC consolidates that these charts just do some consolidation, but this is looking really great. Triangle break. If we look at the triangle target over here, $10 to 28, or even if we just run it from this zone in here and we go 15 to 28, we're looking for a $13 move. We start thinking about that 35 range, okay? But everything's looking great in terms of the crypto space. Let's move on and talk about STPK. So this is Aaron's baby. Aaron did some fantastic DD on this chart. This is the one, right? Yep. STPK. Yep, this is looking great. So I took a position in here, thanks to Aaron for tagging me on the trade. Um, you know, you can look at this. You could call this a bull flag in here. We consolidated 0.32, very low bear volume and consolidation. We hung out near the range. If you've been watching my videos, you know what I talk about. You want to weaken the zone. So if we just... Let's take that off. If we just look at this zone, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight touches of that zone, finally we got a breakout. Ultimately, we're gonna look for a back test in here, right? We're gonna look for a back test in here, but it got good momentum, nice breakout when it broke to the new highs. Good bull volume was coming in near the end of the day. Right here, right? So we can see that big bull volume coming in near the end of the day. A lot of positioning, anticipating the break. And that's what happened. So ultimately, right now I'm looking up a 45, 80 to 51 zone. Nice breakout. I would anticipate we're going to come back and test this zone, look for the higher low back in this range. Very, very notable level in the market. So I would anticipate this market retest happens in here. Ideally, it doesn't happen anytime soon. We see a continuation breakout. And then later on down the road, we can see if it does come back in here, what we're going to want to look for is the very low vol volume. That's what I'm going to be watching on STPK. And let's get into... Some more names in here. Lemonade. So Lemonade, what did Lemonade do? So Lemonade had the fake out breakout, lost this trend line. Okay, so let's relook at Lemonade here from a different perspective. Let's start fresh. Weekly chart, big upper wicks, too far extended on the weekly chart. ADMA is catching up, earnings coming up in March. Weekly ADMA is no longer extended, so that's great. We have our zone in here. This has been acting as a previous resistance. Not a notable level, but it started to, right? I mean, it was an all-time high. We popped and then we dropped up, popped up over it. Back tested it held, back testing hold, back testing and hold. This is not bad. This is holding this zone in here. So if you're looking at this trade, it's a very low risk entry. If we look at this from a line chart, right? Let's go look at that four hour chart right in here. Yeah, we had the fake out breakout right there. So we could be looking at this as a potential you know, descending triangle in this range. Watch that line chart, watch those three touches at the top. We're at the bottom of the zone, very low risk entry, not a lot of bear volume. Are we seeing distribution here? Or are we seeing accumulation before the next move up? I like it from a very low risk entry perspective. If you're bearish, then you know, you're gonna place your stop loss up in that 154 zone. Very low risk, volume's pretty consistent. It does remind me of an accumulation zone. We're gonna need to hold that 138.80. That's what I'd be watching on the Lemonade. Let's check out score. So, wow, uh, like this has been a killer trade. This has been a killer trade. Fantastic. Congratulations, Bulls. You know, continuation today. Another gap up and run. Bullish kicker. We've got one, one, two, three gaps. Potentially, we're looking up for the fourth gap because we didn't sell off today. If we don't see a higher open gap up open tomorrow, we're going to watch. Have to be a little bit concerned. Do we start to see a lot of exit pressure? What we'll be looking for is very low bear volume. I mean, do you think we have opportunity for more potential for a gap up? I didn't sell anything. So I'm looking for that continuation. I was looking at today saying, should I sell off the additions that we made the other day, right? Thinking, you know, is it going to give us that sign? It didn't give us a sign. It told us to stay in the trade, right? If we look at this hourly, we didn't lose the hourly ADMA. It told us to stay in the trade. Little bit of an upper wick in here, okay? A little bit, it's not too significant. So we could potentially be looking for a gap up. We're gonna be anticipating the gap up because we didn't get a volume climax scenario. We know the votes on February 17th. Everything's looking great on this, on this trade, on this chart, continuation to hold in the core. This could be, you know, a very extended move right now. All the way, you know, continuation just keeps on going, keeps on going into the February 17th vote. That's what I'm thinking potentially could happen where we start to see some consolidation, but it's very healthy and we don't get a climax scenario. So score, no change in the plan for now. LT, drone delivery. So I took this trade today 
And I'm thinking, you know, we have potential here because of the volume that I'm seeing coming into the chart. I know we're at the top of this range, right? But I'm looking at a couple of things in here. That volume, last week, previous volume. And then today, let's go look at today. I'm saying this is gonna see higher prices. And then when I was looking at this, cause Rambo brought it up last week and I looked at it and I said, man, you know, that looks like pretty good. Like it looks like a pretty good trade. I don't know if I wanna take it, you know, it's you know, another penny stock, you know, score had a reason to take it. But in this case, I saw the bull volume today. I said, you know, this chart looks really good. It does look like opportunity for, to see a melt up, a big breakout. So right now, if we don't get follow through tomorrow, it's going to be fine. The bull volume is telling me everything's fine in here. That we'll just let the ADMA catch up. We'll consolidate a little bit sideways, potentially set up a daily bull fly. But ultimately, I think we're going to go make a new all-time high. I think we're seeing positioning for a new all-time high. This big bull volume recently, this in here, is telling me they're anticipating higher prices. So I'm thinking we broke the 194. All we have is 226. We could hit it tomorrow. We could hit a 15% day tomorrow and we'll be up at a new all time high. And that's why I took the position. Ultimately, I'm going to let the chart decide. I don't know too much about the company. I know they're doing drones. Like that's it. I'm going to let the chart decide if it's to stay in. The idea is multi day for now because unless tomorrow goes parabolic, right? But if we get a little bit of a higher open, it's not going to be really giving us reason to sell. I do think there's opportunity here for a large move, and that's what I want to I want to be in for because that big bull volume in there is telling me this bear volume in here was an inside bar day. You know, people that were in that previous day started to sell, no follow through, boom, big big bull vol bull volume the next day. So it's telling me higher prices to come. So I like to set up in here, VFF. So VFF, we're looking for a new all time high. Right, uh, potentially tomorrow. We're gonna see, it's all about CGC now. CGC, the bellwether of the space has its earnings tomorrow morning. That's gonna affect everybody. But I don't know if it's gonna affect the Truel and the Kuros, right? Well, we'll have to see there. But in terms of the Canadian names, we know it's gonna affect them. So if CGC delivers, VFF new all time high tomorrow. If CGC doesn't deliver VFF, we start looking for a weekly bull flag, daily bull flag to shape up on this chart. Everything's looking great in here. The momentum in you have to have exposure to the cannabis plays in 2021. You have to. We're likely going to see uh, all of them, not all of them, but major ones making new all time highs. Like, is TLRI going to make a new all time high over 300? Very unlikely, right? Is ACB going to make a new all time high? Very likely. But there's a lot of room to run for those names, as we can see the way TLRY is trading right now. But VFF has the opportunity to make a new all time high tomorrow. Congratulations to the cannabis <coughs> bulls that just stayed with it the entire time. You had to go through a lot of pain, right? And now, hey, the reward for going through that pain. Congratulations, cannabis bulls. Todd Harrison and the boys, right? So let's move on, talk about SHG. We did the video with them today. Ultimately, uh, let's go to the NEO because it's got a little bit more chart history in here. And we don't think that's happening anymore because that should have happened here and it didn't. So now really what we're watching is the bull volume is decreasing while we get up into our supply zone, right? So what we're going to want to do is hang out in this range. Now, unless the bull volume starts to really increase tomorrow, people buy, watch the video and they liked it and, you know, new money comes in, right? We'll watch that. But as of right now, the fact that we're getting up into this zone and the bull volume is decreasing, we're going to look for a pause in this zone. When we pause in the zone, you can see last time we pulled back, we pulled back, we're going to want to trade sideways. We're, we're going to want to do exactly what, what's the name we just talked about that did this? And STPK, what STPK did, traded sideways, weak in the zone, and then go for the breakout. So as right now, I don't like the bull volume decreasing, but I like the fact that we had the all-time high close, right? Yeah, we've never closed higher. And you always love charts that are closing at their all-time highs. Very significant when they do that. So let's move on. Talk about FSR. So I took the FSR entry today. First entry. What was it? I'm just going to relook at this. Uh, 1750 calls for March 19th. We'll only add on a strength of breakout of the range. So it's a very low risk entry. Massive accumulation. It looks like to me. BlackRock, 4% stake in the company. I believe there's opportunity in here for a big breakout. We've had a couple of fake outs, right? A couple of fake outs in here. 
we're going to want to see the real breakout now i took march 19th i didn't take too far out of the money because the you know the re fake outs that this chart's already had but i really love what's happening in this range and it's a very low risk entry low risk for a potential high reward and if we do lose that zone right in there if we do lose 1435 i'll take off the 1750 calls and then relook at this trade if there's going to be some other opportunity in here for this name but i love the fact that the accumulation in this zone hasn't stopped bears have had many opportunities to break down in the zone have not broken out we've seen a couple of bull spikes and we want to see the true bull spike break out sundial so everyone's really liking the sundial name right it's getting a lot of attention daily chart today very nice candlestick volume was pretty light we're still watching that four hour triangle okay so this is essentially what we're watching we want to see the break tomorrow just up and update that upper trend line a little bit we do like that zone being bought off so tomorrow we want to see the true breakout on this chart it's co it's cooled off right we got too far extended ADMA came back ADMA is really close it's got a nice opportunity for a breakout and then we start thinking into that 170 range that's what I'd be watching on sundial let's move on to talk about snow I didn't see what snow did today Pretty much spinning top candlestick, still trading within that resistance range, unable to get a breakup over this new short-term four-hour supply. Well, it's essentially the entire supply zone that's taking place in here, right? Right in this zone. Let's fix that up. Right in here. That's our resistance. Volume is very light. We know we're seeing a lot of option activity pricing coming in. You have a very low risk stop in here at 298. Very low risk. If that breaks down, then you know you just look for EGP pullback because that would mean we're losing the 0.382 we're losing the 0.382 oh, we'll be right at the 0.382 if we lose that so then you can watch 296 so if we lose 296 i'd be a little bit more concerned and then i'd be watching the gp down at 280 282 that's what's on tap for score let's go check out teledoc no rocket the rocket company still a bear flag in this range right still a bear flag it's not respecting that trend line. Popped up over the zone. We couldn't hold it. This is still going to be a key zone in the chart. We're still going to be watching this range. But now we've created a lot more supply. Earnings, February 25th. So there's time till earnings. Not great. There's no real great pattern in here. It's a breakout, fake out. Gave you a lot of pushback down to the downside. Now we're basing in this range. Have to see the reaction break on this range. As of right now, very choppy. You could make the argument that... No, there's nothing in there. I was going to say, it's basically just trading in a sideways channel right now. And you could still call this a bear flag. No real clean entry. Lack of buyers right now. That's the problem. You can see every higher open has pulled down and closed lower, except one day in the past two weeks. Lack of buyers. Still a daily bear flag. Watch out for that. Let's move on and talk about Teladoc. Teladoc. Continuation. All-time high close. Beautiful. Yep. Came back. Back tested the zone. Not perfectly, but it came into this range. Bearish divergence here on the new high. Yeah, new all-time high. Close at all-time high. That's looking fine. Triangle broke bull. Everything's looking good in Teladoc. Slight bearish divergence. So if we do consolidate on the daily, we just look for some healthy consolidation. Everything right now is looking really good. 300 plus. That's what we're looking for. We want to hold that ADMA now and continue to melt up holding the ADMA. Amazon. Let's check out Amazon in here. So not much happening still. Still trading under the, oh, we had a fake out breakout, right? We're still, it's still the same supply zone. We got, I don't know, what does Amazon need? Does it need some news? Does it need something? It's not really trading too well. It hasn't traded well for a long time. But you know what happens when you trade in a very long cons consolidation period? The break is huge. So when we do see the true break, the true volume, the true Breakout move on Amazon, anticipate higher prices, short-term target, 34.94 and 37.92. That's what I'd be watching on this chart. Let's move on, Baba. Let's see what Baba do. Baba not doing much, but it's still a big inverse head and shoulders. You know, you're gonna wake up one day and Baba's gonna be gone. It's gonna be one of those scenarios. News, overnight market, the way they trade in China, whatever it's gonna be. Ultimately, we still got the big inverse head and shoulders in here. If you're playing this name, you really just want to respect your stop under the 0.382. No real reason to sell. It's just not giving you a lot of momentum right now on BABA, but it does have opportunity because this is a big reversal pattern shaping up here, looking really good. Let's check out this name, Futu. Futu has been running, right? Every time I check it, it's like, it's up, it's up, it's up. Okay, well, these two days started to pull back. So that's our supply zone that we've created in here. Big bull volume in the past two days, all-time high close. That's great, you always like that. Four hour. 
Four hours still got these resistances in here. So you gotta be watching that 131 zone. It's a pre-market resistance. Pre-market or after hours? Pre-market resistance. Pre-market resistance. That's what I'd be watching tomorrow. All-time high close. Chart's looking really good. Nice daily higher low. Continuation daily higher low. That's just our little red flag zone. And the weekly chart is a little bit extended in here, right? So it's a little bit extended away from the ADMA. So in these cases, if you're in from the lows, there's no sell signal, right? You want to continue to allow this to develop. If you're going in for the short-term trade, you have to note each time it's come up in the zone, it's been a little bit extended. So it's been unable to get fall through. That's what I'd be watching on Futu. Moving on, talking about PSTH. So PSTH got the breakout today. That's nice. We're in a good position in here. Now that upper wick, I didn't like so much, right? So upper wick is telling me more than likely we're gonna see an inside bar tomorrow unless we get news or something, right? Last time we got an upper wick, we got an inside bar of a bearish lean. We don't want that bearish lean tomorrow. We've been seeing nice accumulation volume in the zone as it started to break out. Today we saw big bull volume and a breakout. Now, I'm looking for the inside bar and I would love to continue to close at all time high. So an inside bar trading in this range, 3250s, plus tomorrow, that's what I'd be looking for. We started to consolidate at the end of the day in here, very healthy trading up over the hour with ADMA. I don't wanna sell this name now. Now that we got a good position in, just wanna allow it to develop unless the chart tells us it's time to get out. So one of those scenarios, I'm not looking over managed. I wanna see a true breakout. I wanna see something like what skills did and you know these, these facts and this is the Ackman SPAC. We're gonna find out news eventually. They said first quarter, we're seeing volume coming in. We saw a big spike in bull volume today. So it's seemingly news coming soon that's what it's starting to look like for me let's go check out peloton now peloton's still consolidating we're looking for this lower trend line to hold that's what we want to see if we close under the lower trend line a little bit caution we can fall back all the way down into the 120 zone perfect low risk opportunity tomorrow if we still see some bullish action this would be a good opportunity cgc both flag is still in play but now it's all about tomorrow's earnings right we can't, we can't really say much we gotta see what reaction we're gonna get. If we get the bull reaction, we're looking up near all time high and we're gonna be very extended as we get into the zone from the weekly. So we know potentially we could get a big reaction and potentially sell the news event because how extended the chart is. If they get a bearish reaction, then we're just looking for our weekly higher low and we'll look for something above the weekly ADMA. That's what I've been watching on CGC. DraftKings. And DraftKings, bearish and golf account set today. Volume's not so significant. It's the higher low of this chart needed, right? We didn't get up to these targets, but we still have opportunity to get into there. Ultimately, very healthy, okay? Yes, bearish and golf account set, we could trade a little bit lower, but we needed the ADMA to catch up. It's still a very strong chart right now. We are thinking up higher. Just gotta look for that daily higher low to tell us it is in when we see the bear volume completely drop off and we start to see the bull volume coming in. This is what I'd be watching on DraftKings. Moving on, I'm just looking for names that are still in high demand. Let's check it out here, Airbnb. Weekly chart, highest close ever on the weekly. Daily chart, second highest close. Oh yeah, today we wicked off of the GP. Yep, that's what we're gonna be watching. So watch the golden pocket as we continue to trade in this range, right? That's the zone. Everything else is looking good in here. Nice higher low, higher low, higher low. Volume isn't exciting. So we could look for a scenario where are we gonna get a triangle in here, right? And then we start thinking about, you know, an upper trend line triangle, some, something coming in here. We'll see how this develops. And we could be looking for something like that because the bull volume is not very exciting. We need to get up over the GP. If we get up over the GP, we start taking an all-time high. So got to continue to have Airbnb on watch. It looks pretty good, but we need to get up over that golden pocket. And we didn't have the volume today to do it. Could be doing it tomorrow. So let's watch out for that. Moving on, talking about space. Space is doing what it's going to do in this zone, right? It's like up and down, up and down, up and down. So it started very strong today, ended up being indecision, spinning top candle said the volume's dropping off. So it's telling me this range is gonna get choppy. This range is gonna get tighter, unless there's gonna be news. We'll find out when the ETF's gonna come online because we know that's gonna create buy pressure. We could be looking for some form of a triangle to form in here. That's what I'd be watching. Ultimately, I do think space is gonna be trading up higher. I think we got 100 plus on the horizon on space. So it's all about finding the perfect entry right now to go out the money and let it develop chart is too choppy still needs consolidation because we're looking at that weekly chart still too far extended in here to start thinking about out the money because when you go out the money and you're just far away from the weekly one consolidation day and it's boom you know you're getting killed so right now i'm just waiting for a little bit more consolidation to take place on this chart 
this is all short-term trades right now. Anything in here is short-term trade. If you're in from the lows, you're not caring what happens in here. We need to build a new base. This is the base we're looking for. Trade in this range. Allow this to happen. Of course, if it breaks out now, continuation, we got the volume. Of course, there's, a, there's more in the trade, but ultimately, it's too far extended to go out the money. So I'd rather be something near the money, in the money, or in common shares. Looking for this base to establish in the zone. Hella chop, as you can see, we made a new all-time high on Thursday. Look what happened. Big drop down. Why? Because we're just too far extended. That's simply it right now. But it's a great trader. So if you're looking for constant day trades, there's still opportunity in here. And let's check out PKK. So PKK announced they're going to be uh, uplisting to the NASDAQ. They did the application. We got an all-time high close on this name. Yeah, all-time high close. Second all-time high close. Second highest. Bull bond, because of the news, everything's looking great. Nice rounded bottom in here. We could potentially go for a four-hour cup and handle. So if we don't make a new high and watch this lower trend line, it is holding. We just got to redraw that a little bit right in here. That's great. If we do not make a new all-time high, watch for the handle to form, and we will have the cup and handle in here. So we've been watching our rounded bottom, right? Don't make a new all-time high. Then we shape up our handle. We'll look for healthy, a nice healthy channel, low bear volume consolidation, which will give us a nice opportunity here to play for the breakout. Ultimately, the chart looks fantastic, and they have an event that potentially on the horizon. So we could be looking for positioning into that OGI. Wow, all MJ, eh? I haven't looked at OGI in a long time. So 330, big move. Now we're watching this resistance in here at 366. Big bull volume, that's great. You know, how much is gonna get affected by CGC tomorrow? We'll, we'll see, bullish or bearish, right? If no other circumstances were around, that bull volume positioning coming in today, MJ is hot, right? You could play just the ETF if you don't know which ones to play. You could play the MSO's ETF, you could play MJ ETF. There's lots of opportunity, HMMJ, if that's still around, I think it is. Um, 364, 401, those are the next resistances. These type, this type of volume always tells me higher prices to come. The entire space is telling us higher prices to come, like TLRY. TLRY is one of my favorites that I'm kind of fooling around with right now because it's a great mover. It gives you a lot of opportunity to the upside. So what we're watching right now is that 3089 zone. If we get the bullish reaction tomorrow on CGC, we start looking at 35 and higher, 39. And then, you know, this chart does have a lot of room right, in terms of <laughs> its next weekly resistance, all the way up in the 48. Weekly is a little bit extended. We can get much more extended, and we got our weekly resistance up over here at 33.65. After that, it's pretty thin. There's a lot of opportunity on TLRY, and we know people love to trade TLRY. NVDA, let's check on NVIDIA in here. And where are we right now? 38 minutes in, NVIDIA. Okay, Tyrion, I see. It broke, nice. There we go. We gotta trust this move. We gotta trust this move. Massive accumulation zone. Broke, volume spiked up. We gotta be thinking all time high. 600 calls, something along those lines. Momentum trade. Now we're watching the 587, 589 double top and we should be looking for continuation. Massive period of accumulation. Breaking out, volume. Tomorrow we wanna see the increasing bull volume. This is looking really good for a continuation play. Two more names we're going to talk about is Sun Power. Let's check it out in here. Daily higher low is in. That's the weekly higher low being attempted to be in. Weekly ADMA too far extended. That's why the consolidation happened. It looks like earnings are coming up this week. So we're going to have to see, or next week, going to have to see the reaction to that. Big move. Consolidation, I would anticipate a lower high on this chart, okay? And you want to be looking at the GP zone. So if we think about our top 57, look for a retracement. I'd be watching for a GP double top over there, 57, 52. So that's going to be a notable level as we eventually get back to that range. Watch out for it. This GP, 50 to 5073 is going to line up in here. This is what I would anticipate. We started to stall to 0.382. If you, lose, if you don't break up over the 0.382, those lows are going to be tested. Got to get up over the zone today. So mean tomorrow, break today's high quickly. And then you're starting to look up at that resistance in there. And that, that's where I would anticipate the stall because unless the bull volume is going to change because the bull volume is a little bit weak. Workhorse, so Workhorse had a consolidation day today. So let's go look at this daily chart. Right off of the ADMA, indecision, very low volume. We want to see that now being the daily higher low. I have my position in here and I'm thinking we have opportunity to go up higher. 
consolidation, ADMA, ADMA, here we go again, ADMA, we want to continue to hold it, low bear volume, we want to see that bull volume coming in tomorrow, we do not want to lose it, if we lose the ADMA, then I mean it's game over, have to watch how the consolidation looks, we had a fake out breakout of the triangle for now. You could say, you know, you could make the argument that we're just back testing right now. We're still holding the lower trend line. Ultimately, we have to get, we want to get up in that zone, but we have to hold the ADMA. That's what I'd be watching here on Workhorse. And a couple of late comments came in here. So I'll check them out for Aaron and Cam, LAC and AMD. So let's check out LAC. And let's look at this name in here. Let me just double check which name it is. Not sure which one it is. Are they the same? They're the same companies. Okay, so yeah, really good. Bear flag negated. That's great. Big bull volume. That's great. Very nice. So now we're looking back up and we're looking up at our resistance here all the way up to 25.19. The volume is pretty good. So we're not sure if we're going to reject this zone right now, right? And you can see we had an inverse head and shoulders as well. We had our left shoulder right in here, our head. Our right shoulder developed. We had our neckline in this zone in here. Oh, why is that doing that? Let's fix this up. Fix that up in there, right? There was our neckline. We broke that bull. We got the bull reaction. We got the volume. Now, you know, we got to think about where's the lower high likely to come. You know, this is not a big market cap name, but we start looking at the GP. That's where we close. So if we can't break the GP, we look for a tightening pattern. If we could break through the zone tomorrow, we're going to be watching up in this zone. It's looking pretty good. I like that bull volume that came in on that inverse head and shoulders break. AMD. So did AMD follow NVDA today? That's a nice candlestick. It's been a hell of a choppy chart, right? But now this looks, hey, this looks pretty good. This looks ready. GP, lower high, higher low, boom, breaking out. We should be looking for continuation play, and I do think we have opportunity in here. We're looking at 95, back up to all-time high. That could be it on the weekly, right? Very long period of consolidation on the weekly chart. So if we think about this range in here, look how long we traded in this range before we actually broke out. That was 98 days. How many days have we been trading in this range? 70 days, right? 70 days, 98 days. It's got opportunity, massive accumulation on the weekly, broke over here, accumulation on the weekly, broke, accumulation on the weekly, broke. Now we're watching more accumulation on the weekly chart and looking for a much larger move. Pretty interesting. The space looks like it's moving. Now, one more, and then I'm going to go over to YouTube and check out what's happening. Oh, we had a question over here too, so let's get into it. Amy on the venture. So let's check out this name. Woo! Look at this. This is a major breakout. Massive move in here. Big move. Lengthy period of consolidation. Accumulation. Big breakout. Massive bearish divergence on this new high. But look at the bull volume coming in here, right? So this move is running. Is this a all-time high? All-time high. Big move in here. Bearish divergence here. And we're going to have to watch how this plays out in the coming days, right? We'll see. It can be negated. The bull volume is very strong. They tell me it's going to be negated. All time high close. You know, bullish character candlestick, almost a bullish marbuzo candlestick on volume. That looks absolutely fantastic. Just look for the four hour higher low. That's it. If you're in, you just want to see what that four hour higher low looks like. If you're not in, you want to wait for it, right? To see what it looks like. And then potentially, if we do reject somewhere up in the zone, we'll watch how this trend line develops moving forward. Rick, can you touch on why you might not want to take a start on LI here of a tight stop at the lower trend line? There's no reason to not. I actually already tried it. And then we got the overnight news that didn't play favorable. And then just to get protective out of the, uh, without the money calls. The only reason why I didn't take it today was because I took, well, I have a, I have a boatload of positions, right? So plus I took uh, Fisker today and I took uh, Neo. So two more names in the in the EV space. There's no reason not to take this trade right now. Like if if I don't want to manage 25 charts, right? I don't know how many I have. I got to check. But, you know, it's just another name right now. I took LI last week and then they stopped me out on that news. And instead today I took FSR and NEO. I could I like NEO a lot better though than any of them because where NEO is in the chart. But LI, very low risk entry in here potential for huge upside. This is a great opportunity for a low risk, high reward potential. I'm going to move over to YouTube. So for those that just wanted to watch the video for these charts, 
I mean, you could end it right now. Don't forget to give a thumbs up. Those are watching it on a recap. But for those that came and joined on YouTube, I'm going to run through a couple of the questions and comments that they have there. Cheers to everybody that came to check out the video. And I'll try and get through as much as I can, if there is. Uh, Mara, high prices to come. Yep. What's up, guys? Uh, hello to everybody, because I know a lot of people will say hi, so I just want to say hello to everybody instead of doing it one by one. Uh, Beam. Yes, Fred. Let's check it out. Beam. Let's check it out on the weekly chart. So, weekly bull flag looking fantastic. Even the one spike in bear volume was actually bulls buying the dip significantly. That's great. Bear volume is dropping off. Proximity to all-time highs, fantastic. This is looking really good. This chart's looking really good. We had a ton of hidden bullish divergence, which is corrected. Looks like inverse head and shoulders on the four-hour chart just broke the bull. No, it was in a four-hour head and shoulders, but daily chart's looking really good in here. Weekly chart's looking really good. Yeah, so right now, you got a triangle. So it's really about watching how this triangle breaks. It's definitely looking like it's going to want to break bull. Like you're coming in here, you're coming in there. So that upper trend line right now, let's go to a line chart to see where those... No, it didn't go in a line chart. So we're going to have to look at it from those real bodies right in there. Cutting through those wicks or watch the wicks. Okay, that's how we'll look at it. We'll look at it from this perspective. See which one's going to react. We have a beautiful triangle right now. Very low volume in this triangle. So it tells me we should look a little bit tighter in the triangle unless you see the spike in bull volume or bear volume, right? Otherwise, we anticipate that we're going to come up. We're not going to break the zone. We shouldn't break the zone because we don't have the volume to break the zone. And that is our problem zone, right? So we pause in here. Then we look for a higher low and we continue to trade in this range. Really nice weekly and daily pattern. Very nice consolidation happening up in the zone. That's what I've been watching on the beam. I wanted that hat. So the guy who won the hat was, the guy who won the hat was, what's his name? I'm just gonna double check. I should, I'll announce it here on this video. The guy who won the hat was Sandeep Gill. Sandeep Gill won the hat. So um, I do have, I do wanna give out two hats. I've got a whole bunch of hats. I'm gonna continue to do giveaways. And that's what I'm gonna do. I have like so many hats and stuff, sweaters, shirts. So that's what I'm gonna do. I just need like, you know, ideas on these giveaways. So as of right now, I gave away one. I was thinking I'm gonna give away two. Reading the comments, likely still gonna, there's still more comments rolling in so that I haven't read. So I'm gonna check it out. What's up, Jilly? NVDA, we already did. I'll check out Adobe. Oh, Adobe is a fantastic setup. Adobe is just ready to go. Like, look at this Adobe setup. Now we closed up over that trend line. Let's double check this in here. Yeah, so we did. We closed up over that upper trend line. Let's check the volume that's coming in here. Consolidation day, just a little bit extended, right? How, how we're running into this zone, our resistance. The triangle is breaking, but we still got to deal with this zone in here. But yeah. One of the stars stops that's not trading at all time highs. I think the rest of them are. Shopify, the trade desk, Roku, Shopify. No, what was the other one? What's the other one? Shopify, Square, right? Um, so this looks prime. This looks prime. You wanna see that volume? Bear bomb continue to drop off and then break through the zone. So we need to weaken this zone a little bit more, but it's a really nice setup shaping up on Adobe. Coach Steve, what's up, man? I haven't seen you in a long time since way back Instagram days, Coach. Score had a nice run. Yeah, Score continues to be a monster of a trade. Monster of a trade. DraftKings, and like not much happened to DraftKings. It's just you always have to watch out for how far extended the chart is getting, right? Even when you're in blue skies, it needs to be consolidation periods. So if we look at this, you know, we're extended a little bit in here, pushed up a little bit higher, the volume's pretty light. Um, you know, it's not a good trader also, it just, it pushes, but it doesn't, it's not a great trader. 
but ultimately we're still trading in the all-time high range we need to get clearance through the zone we could double top in this range right we broke it by you know a little bit but it could be a double top zone and then we trade within this range so it needs more development but overall if you're in DraftKings, you don't really have a sell signal right now to be honest with you i hate this trade i hate this name it's never worked out well for me but you know it's at all-time highs so it's great you know some names you just don't have a good vibe with it. it's like man every time i play you it doesn't work out like every pattern and i look at the chart and i say well here we go it's higher it's continuously higher but it never trades well it never makes you so comfortable in the trade but i know people killed this name for sure in the betting space score has been my baby yeah, score i love like now i'll have a nice relationship with score you know what i mean forever and i think score is going to continue to go consolidation but continue to go all right let's move on here CRSP, CRISPR Therapeutics, CRSP, that's right, CRISPR Therapeutics, let's check it out, still a daily bear flag, okay, spike in bear volume in here, bulls got to hold this zone, you know, could even call it a head and shoulders pattern developing in here too, right, your neckline would be down in this range, so we would look at the neckline in here. So that's one thing that you got to be concerned about. There's a couple of charts that look like head and shoulders patterns, bear flags, and boom, they're popping bull, right? It's hard to catch a bear play right now. Like that's what bears are feeling, right? Bears time frame now for letting a trade mature is the hourly chart. Uh, that's what it seems like. But right now, um, that lower trend line holding, it is a bear flag. It is a head and shoulders pattern. It's not the best bull setup that's out there. A lot of big spike in volume today and, you know, unable to break down. So, you know, some shares are moving around in this range. And that could tell us, well, you've had opportunity here for 10 trading sessions to break a bear and you didn't. Tells us that this bear flag might break bull, right? And overall, why would a bear flag break bull in these cases? You know, don't forget, like the larger time frame, this weekly chart is still a bullish chart, right? It's still a bullish chart. I mean, most names in the market are bullish charts, right? So that's why. Bears have to really push it really take over the chart bearish news something along those lines because everybody wants to buy right now buying bull a y a y r strategies cannabis mso well you know these cannabis mso's everything's looking great you got you have to be in the space you have to have some mj like you have to right the momentum is all there it's the blue sky name not really much to say here. It's a blue sky name. It's just very extended. So, you know, you start getting worried about the consolidation. You know, when's it really going to take place? We had some in here. We broke out. Hidden bullish divergence. Broke a bull. You know, daily AD mate. Everything's looking great on this name. Like, fantastic. And you need exposure. So, this is a good name. ABCR. ABCR gone beautiful massive move massive uh, the, the pennies are running hard now like every penny is like exploding um momentum is there it's fantastic it's running vertically so you're going to be looking for some form of a significant period of consolidation eventually right you're but pennies can do this you can't use the same measurement um from the names we typically cover large caps to a penny stock right if you think about this extension away from the ADMA, you have to understand, you know, sometimes people tell me, oh, you know, it's 30% away from the ADMA because they're used to us saying, you know, look, Apple's, you know, 5% away from the ADMA. Yeah, that's significant for Apple. But for these names, it could go 300% and then eventually crash. So really for these types of trades, you have to be aware that the extension is going to trigger a significant period of consolidation. So you really want to zoom in and you want to treat like the hourly chart as your daily chart. So when that hourly loses the ADMA, you start anticipating here comes the pullback. And a pullback on this chart all the way back down to 30 cent, 36 cents would be extremely healthy. But who wants to hold for a drop of uh, 38%? Nobody, right? I never met somebody that wants to do that. But it would be extremely healthy because if you think about where it's come from, it's also 516% off the bottom. So those in don't care about that retracement. Those trying to get in, you run into risk up over here. 
So when I'm in a trade like this, I start wanting to walk up my stop and really start focusing in on the smaller time frame charts because I'm aware the larger time frame is saying, get ready, consolidation is inevitable and clearly coming very soon. Never wanna to sell too soon, right? You sell a chart because it's it's up so much. You have so much money in the PL, but the chart's actually not telling you to sell right now. If we think about what this chart is doing, and you can use this for any chart, guys, is you know, don't trade off the PL, trade off the chart, you know. And when you get too far extended, you want to start using these time frames, right? The hourly is your major, and this is the most important thing. And if you think about if I wanted to sell this chart, I'd be saying, hey, listen, if we lose the hourly, higher low pattern, then I'm gonna stop out. If you look at the higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low, what am I gonna say? You know what I'm gonna say? Yeah, higher low. And that hourly ADMA is absolutely money right now. The four hour has been money throughout. Spinning top candlestick, far extended away from the ADMA. Really zoom in our 30 minute chart. Tell me, okay, is this it? Or we're gonna blow off and we're gonna see that correction. Because when we have a big run, we wanna stay in as long as we can. But once we start getting ready for a climax, okay. Climax is going to show you in the five fifteen minute chart. You don't need to wait for the daily to tell you. It's going to tell you on the five minute. If you haven't watched my trading climaxes video, make sure you watch it. It helps save you a lot of money and make you a lot of money too. The biggest thing I find with people that get frustrated is they sell too soon, right? They always sell too soon. And I try and you know just show you a couple of things. And I'm just thinking of a name recently that broke out big time. Anyways, when it's a big tech name and it's a big or a big market cap name and it's a breakout mode, watch that two minute ADMA. Watch that five minute ADMA. Actually, this is the one I was thinking about right now. And obviously it's not a big name, but we know. Um, game, right? If we think about the recent move that game had on that big 100% bounce was the two minute ADMA, right? If you look at it, and let me see what that looked like without extended hours. Either way, right? You see the move? I think it was of extended hours. I was watching it. Right, you see the move in here? It's holding, it's already run huge, right? So people are like, okay, I'm out. You know, it's up 10, 20, 30%, 40, 50, they're like, I'm out. It's like, man, you gotta give it the two minute ADMA. You know, it's just, it's just trading sideways. The two minute ADMA hasn't even broke. And then it's like, oh, it hasn't broke the two minute ADMA, but look how far extended, right? Now, talk about zooming in, right? This is what now, unfortunately, you gotta go into the one minute chart. But you can see the ramp up here. See the ramp up? Once you get the ramp up and the volume continues to fly and now you're getting too far extended, forget about it. Daily chart, weekly chart, hourly chart, it doesn't matter. Time frame, it's the pattern. ADMA, volume ramp, too far extended, spinning top can, I said, that's it, that's the time to sell. You know, this wasn't the time to sell. This is not time to sell. You're up 15%, you're up 20%, you're up 30%, you're looking at your account, you're up 20K. You're like, I gotta sell because, no, don't. Let this keep you in the trade. And then, once you get too far extended, look at the volume, what does the volume tell you? Oh, here comes the climax. Another scenario was skills the other day. When it marked its top, we don't know if it's the top top. Where was it here? Here, right? So, and we could use the five minute or we could use the 15 minute, right? It's like ramping, it's algos, it's just continuously buying. It's just, it's, let's, go, let's go use the five minute, right? Look at this. Reminder, we showed you game, two minute, right? It, it doesn't matter. Most of the time I'm talking about hourly, daily. Look at this. Look at the five minute ADMA, right? continues to hold it doesn't you know people want to sell right because they're up so much they're up so much now look it gets extended away from it look at the volume this is when people want to buy oh this is time to sell this is not time to buy people are like oh big ball volume we're going to the moon and no nope, we're selling right now this is what's happening in here too far extended that's the climax boom that marks the top I don't even know how this conversation started. What name was it we were talking about? AYR. AVCR? Yeah. All right, let's move on. Uh, if you have time, let me know your thoughts on Airbnb. We already did Airbnb. Sandeep. Sandeep's here. He won the hat. 
Yeah, only th- 89 likes. And it, and it says like over 200 people have come through so far, only 89 likes. It's hard to get likes in this business. When is Tesla mooning? Tomorrow. If it's not tomorrow, then what's going on, right? Um, let's look at this here. That volume, right? It's not really happening. It's not really happening. I'm just looking for a chart that Sherv just posted right now for me. And this is from Sherv. So if we look at the last triangle, we came down and consolidated. Once we broke out, we back tested to the 0.236. The red line is all the dark pool activity. Now, if we look at the top red line, we're at the 0.236 there again. And that's where all the dark pool activity it is. That's where all the high volume nodes are. If you think about Tesla, the last time it had the big news, you know, is the Bitcoin news big news? That's the question, right? Well, we're going to find out how the market thinks. The market originally thought today that was big news, and then it didn't get any action during the day. Why? Maybe there wasn't enough positioning done yet, right? The last time Tesla got big news was here. The SBX day. And on that day, it was a consolidation day, and everybody's like, oh, this is not going to do anything. It's like, it's, it's going to go. Like, trust me, just give it some time. And didn't ramp, right? And now we've been trading in this range. Ultimately, I do believe it's going to break out. Um, so we got the Bitcoin news today, you know? You know what? I don't know. How big is that? Is that big news for the balance sheet? Right? Apparently, their average price is 15000 I don't know if that's true. Um, let's see what happens tomorrow. I love the setup. We're in this zone. We break this zone. We should go. So tomorrow, all eyes on Tesla. All right, guys, I think I'm going to wrap up and maybe do one or two more. Do you have a Discord channel? I have a chat room on Slack. We have uh, 329 members. This is our chat room in here. Um, we have it all. Better than Discord. We, we like high level. Like Discord's like, you know what I mean? It's not at these levels. I'm sure Discord is good, but yeah, we use Slack. Um, let me see here. Apple. Well, Apple had a bear day today because, you know, or start to today because of the Hyundai news, right? You know, okay, Hyundai is they got a deal of Hyundai. Let's pop it up. Okay, no, no deal of Hyundai. Very tight in this range. Volume is very light. Look at the consolidation volume in here. You can call it a bear flag. I, I wouldn't call it a bear flag personally. Trading over the 0.382. Um, no real break of supports. We got this lower trend line that's holding in here tomorrow. Let's look at this tomorrow. We break 137.49. I believe we'll go not immediately to an all time high. We've established some res- resistance in here. We'll go up to the GP, but unable to break down. I, we should be looking for a new all-time high. And ultimately, I still think we're going to get into that 160 plus range. So I've got my eyes peeled on Apple to get back into it. Could have got back into to it today. Probably should have, but I didn't. And I'm going to be watching it tomorrow. Yeah, uh, CCIV. That's a pretty interesting name. I talked about it in the weekend video. Today, the dip was bought. It's cooled off nicely. Right, it's cooled off nicely, but we still got to get through that zone in there. And you know, we could be looking at this from that perspective in here. We'll see how that develops, but we got to get through this 35 zone. Very low volume of consolidation, so that's very bullish. You'd like to see that. Where's the other one that I was just about to talk about? Baby, yeah, baby flying right now, but baby's flying right into resistance. So we know what happens when you fly straight into resistance zone, you know, it's going to consolidate, right? Bull volume's dropping off, so you don't want to see that. You don't want to see that bull volume dropping off as you get into this resistance. So what I'm going to look for is a bull flag. ADMA will need to catch up. We'll look for some bull flag consolidation. That's what I'll be watching here. Sends. Yeah, we're, we're the chat room is on sends. So sends looking really good. A nice triangle break. 
four hour triangle. Nope, that's the wrong sentence. Here, four hour triangle break, nice move today. And we're looking at that resistance, which is 52 week highs, right? So really nice triple inside bar developing in here on the four hour chart, strong chart, very strong chart. Zom is looking pretty good, right? Four hour back test of the ADMA, just a little bit too far extended, but this is a major breakout on this chart. Continuation, beautiful move. See this triangle in here? And then the breakout, a lot of names are set up with this triangle right now. And is this all time high? It's getting near all time high. Very strong, just too much too soon, running into that all time high. So even if we break, we anticipate consolidation is coming. KNR control, they got the $2 million deal with the government and it's popped since, but today we had a shooting star candlestick. Okay, shooting star candlestick, well, it's been a top candlestick. Could be an evening star, we'll have to see tomorrow. See this zone, this is the key zone in the chart. We ran straight over it, so we're going to back this. It has to, always will. So that's what we're looking for right now. Very extended chart. News, drove it up. It looks like we ran out of buyers today. That's why you're seeing the big upper wick. Full volume dropping off a little bit. There's a big portion of this is some selling. Overall, very strong, very good. Just looking for healthy consolidation. Too much, too soon. There's no real reason to panic right now. Um, you know, do you want to go straight to an all-time high? Well, if you do, then you still would be a seller anyways because it's going to collapse from there. So if we could, you know, consolidate now, trade in this range nicely, build up a new base, it'll be better for the longevity of the chart to continue to run in an all-time high fashion. So looking really good. We could potentially be just looking for an inside bar tomorrow as well. Could be a higher open. Everything will be fine. If it's a lower open, we're looking to hold in this range and consolidate in here. And we want to see that bear volume start to really drop off. That's it. Thanks, Baba. All right, I'll do two more. I'm gonna check out Overstock. Overstock and SF Fix. So Overstock, ooh, Overstock looks really good. Falling wedge broke. Man, 100% move. Ah, I didn't notice this. I haven't looked at this in a while. We got all the way up in here. Very nice. Low volume. This is it. We're in the GP right now. We got to break the GP. If we don't break the GP, we come back. We look for a daily higher low. We want to continue to hold the ADMA. Look at the ADMA. Absolutely money right now. Very nice. Nice break over here on Overstock. Congratulations. Last but not least. Or is it least? I don't know. I haven't looked at it. Well, I don't know what name this one is because there's two of them. I'm going to imagine it's not the Scotia Strategic Fixed Income ETF portfolio. So it's got to be this one. Otherwise, that would be some really boring trading, right? So big reversal on the weekly. Okay, need to come back to the ADMA. Here it is, back to the ADMA. Let's check out the daily. Daily is the bear flag right now. So you have to watch out for this bear flag scenario in here. You know, weekly is still holding, right? The ADMA, so that's okay but you do have a bear flag on this chart. So that's one red flag I'd wanna watch out for and see if you negate. And if you drop, then I'll look for a back test of this zone in the 7213 zone. What's the market cap on this name? Big market cap, so really you wanna watch the fibs. So we'll be watching here off of our low to that breakout GP. And yeah, we bounced right off of the GP, right? But we need a better bounce off of the GP. We need to get up over at 0.382 and as of right now we didn't even get over the 0.236 it looks like so we need to see a better move back to the upside and that would be breaking the 0.382 so the bear flag is still in play we need to get up over 90.23 to negate this bear flag right now lower trend line i'd be watching if we do break down and see if we could hold in this range in there which would mean we break below the GP, but we still hold that 73 range and the back test of this range. I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. Peace out, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow morning for Morning Live.